There you go. You the best. Uh Mike check one two one three. We got E. We got J. We bought the spillers T. <laughs> See, I had to be extra live because she said, "Don't be dry since you ain't since you fasting." Yeah, he was when I <laughs> talked to him earlier today. He was dry. I said, "Oh, you real dry." I, I was I, at work. I had on a work voice. How was your week though? My week was. This has been a long week, and it's only what. Halfway through. Yeah, I'm tired. What's been going on? Sorry, I'm trying to hook up this. What's been going We're on? To hook up the go live. Um, business wise, sophisticated lady is like <laughs> booming. Oh yeah. Like I'm trying to keep up. Like I'm really, really trying to keep up. I said I'm about to start contracting my services out, trying to get people to help a sister out. Oh yeah. That's Let's try to juggle work and. Juggle the show, and I mean, I'm appreciative, but I'm I'm tired. Very busy. I'm tired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> How are you? My week has been great, man. I had a great day yesterday. It was beautiful outside. Chilled downtown for a long time. You know, mm-hmm. just walked around, just took it all in for a second. And who we got here with us today? Oh, we got a special guest in the building. <laughs> he ain't even really a guest no more. This is this the third time you actually an honorary member of Spinning the Tea. <laughs> okay, cool, time, right? cool. Do I get a jacket? Or- <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's coming. I get, See, I, I get, ordered it. It's a varsity, varsity joint. Varsity joint. Okay, Pink cool. is purple joint. Okay, cool. I need- I'm sure you could put that together. I need some phones or something to go with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see okay. you got the fresh mirrors on right now, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me see. see. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, pastor. Yeah. <laughs> Look, man, I'm just a I'm just an old sneaker here. <laughs> so who we got today is we got Pastor Jay Jones, man. He definitely been in the building. What this is the third time? I wasn't here on the second one, but yeah. the first time we had an awesome conversation. Yeah. And you always welcome to come back whenever. My man. So, yeah, you already know, man. We're gonna spill this tea today, man. Yeah, nope. Yeah. Hold, hold on, but I know last week I was pressing everybody to go see that um, Birth of a Nation joint, mm-hmm. and I caught it. And I'm extra pressing y'all to go see it now. How was it? It was an excellent movie. Um, I definitely left the joint feeling some kind of way. What kind of way? Well, people say that I feel some kind of way. You got to laugh. What's the kind of way? <laughs> well, it's, it's a, a lot of kind of ways. Well, <laughs> it's, it's definitely a racial-based well, movie. So, you can, uh, so it was a Capitals game. Going on downtown, like right after the joint. So you was ready for the revolution. So I'm just walking through. I'm like, everybody move on my way. Like you was part in the red Yeah, I'm getting, hey, (laughs) you can stay here if you want to. I'm walking strong today, though. But no, it was definitely a good movie, especially because the more and more I talk about it, the more I realize people don't really know who Nat Turner is Mm -hmm. or don't understand that revolution. And I think while we always get taught about the slavery times, that's one of the pivotal points where, you know, that resistance that is still here, that has always been here, that mm-hmm. seems to try to get buried, we should always say that as a as a topic point. So do we, I mean, remember when we were talking about his personal issues overshadowing the movie? I, I Well, I, it's like I said, you know what I mean? Like we said on the last show, it's, you know, it's ironic that it just so happens mm-hmm. that these personal issues come out now. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know, and I don't want to, I don't want to necessarily speak on a rape case because I don't really know all the details. I just knew that it was somebody that he was dealing with. And that's not to say that you won't, that you can't rape somebody mm-hmm. that you dealt with before. But he was acquitted. And that does not take away from the facts of the movie itself. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that we watch or that we partake in that the person who put it together is horrible. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But That's that does true. not stop you in any way. If we wear Nike, like you like we just had a conversation about phone pauses. We wear Nikes, even though Don't say nothing bad about Phil Knight. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to say nothing directly <laughs> bad about Phil Knight, but they made in sweatshops. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we don't agree with sweatshops, but we wear the shoes. So why would you why would you turn your back on something that could be actually embedded into history? This could be one of those movies that they play all the time based on how you make those how you make those sales generate. Mm-hmm. So I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet. Um, I'm really curious just be. And then what, what's so bad about it is all the kind of commentary around it has kind of ruined the experience of seeing the movie for me. Right. And I really, you know, I I'm, I love history. And I was familiar with the story of Nat Turner. Of course, he's not somebody that we learn about in school. Right. Right. right? I don't think either of you 
he wasn't on the Black History post. Not at all. You know, in Black History Month, he mm-hmm. wasn't one of the topics. But, you know, it's an important part of our history. And I, I think, I, I, here's the thing. I think some, there's some important conversations that are happening as a result of everything, even surrounding the movie. Absolutely. You know, we're having a, we're having a conversation about consent in in relationships mm-hmm. that's really necessary mm-hmm. because you know one of the things i've heard you know many people say is that as you get older your understanding of what consent looks like it, it evolves it changes and Absolutely. maybe what you thought you know what you understand is consent as a grown man may not of what may, may not be what you thought it was at i don't know 20 mm-hmm. right you right. know so i think there's some important conversations that are happening in our community and the awareness, even if you don't see the movie, the awareness that there's a guy named Nat Turner who's Absolutely. out there who did, who, who, you know, sparked one of the, you know, major revolutions that we saw in, you know, in, in terms of black history. Just knowing that that guy's out there and being able to go because the Internet's free, mm-hmm. you know, being able to go and research and figuring out. We had to go to Encyclopedia, you know, Britannica. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, know, we had to put some work in. in, in, in the world book. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And, and rock with the Dewey Decimal System. Yeah, yeah absolutely. To try and figure this stuff out. But I think there's a generation of young people that can learn about this stuff, you know, that now they're aware of it. So mm-hmm. I think that's I, I think that's something you can take that's positive from it without getting into a, all the nasty details. Yeah, yeah, and get them to go see that. And I mean, no, no shade against Kevin Hart, but it's just like, You're go right. see that too. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Go. Give your two dollars to that too. Movies are expensive though. Music. That's why I went and caught it. Way too expensive. I caught it. Good old Madden. Let me tell you. Yeah. And that was a good look for me. Absolutely. When whenever I catch those Fandango um certificates, mm-hmm. and you can get the like you know two tickets for twenty dollars. Two it's tickets so for twenty dollars. That's 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 a good deal now. I Absolutely. had a friend a while ago. This was like a year or so ago. He posted this on Facebook about. What as as women, it was aimed towards women. Would you feel some kind of way if a guy took you out on a date using a Groupon? Ooh, I wish my wife was here. <laughs> <laughs> is it the first date or is it a date? Like, if, I guess the first oh, a date. Like, if he said, "Can I take you on a right. date?" I don't know if it's the first date or whatever. He didn't pose. He didn't get into that much the, detail. The way, the way my smooth set up, you ain't going to know anyway. <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna finesse this whole mission. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. You got. You may have planned a whole date. You may have a, a Groupon dinner. Mm. You may have a you may have a a, a, a living social living social, a living yeah. social concert okay. uh-huh. and a and a, a go uh, what like, is what? a guide star or whatever the other website is you may have found some other way to finesse talking about, the, talking about the, let's the, do something different the ice today. cream yeah the ice cream <laughs> after the date and yeah, whatever yeah. else you know hey man it's just it's all in how you finesse it I look at it like this did you eat yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you die <laughs> no did you eat? Yeah. Did you pay? right no I I don't. Some of the comments on the thing, if I my memory serves me correctly, because it was so long ago, people was just saying like, on first dates, don't take me nowhere to like Fridays or anything like that. Okay. And I I, I personally don't think Fridays is a first date type thing, unless you say something. Oh, let's go meet at the bar. But if well, you're let me saying ask you let this. me take you out on a date, I don't want to go to Fridays. I go to Fridays anytime. So let me ask you this: What's the point of the first date? To get to know one another. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. If you say, okay, let's go meet at the bar or something like that. Okay. That's not as. You can't get to know somebody on Fridays? You can. That's what I'm saying. Good question. Good question. (laughs) If that's the point. But I'm just saying, like, if he's saying, can I take you out on a date sometime? Whatever the little pickup line is. Can I take you to dinner? And I'm like, yeah, we go to dinner. And, and dinner Fridays? I'll be like, Fridays? That's just me being honest. That yeah, may nah, be it, shallow, but it's the truth. I don't really necessarily think it's shallow. <laughs> I, I, first of all, I love dating. Like, dating is fun. I But I don't think, I, I just don't think that there should be an expectation, period. I think that the expectation should be, let's get up. And let's have a good time and get to know each other, wherever that may be. Okay. It doesn't now I'm not saying that. Me personally, I'm not going to Fridays. But <laughs> if I if I so choose to go to Fridays because I don't feel like driving, because Friday's around the corner, I got the bar connect, whatever. Let's go to Fridays. It's, Look, it is what it is. My wife, we just, my, we just trying my to wife break this sasses ice. me all the time because our first date was ESPN Zone. <laughs> I remember that I remember place. That joy too. I thought I knew this for a minute. But we had a goal. Yeah. She stuff. beat me in a she beat me in a game, yeah. and, and it, it yeah, was cool. We had dinner, fun. Yeah. and it wasn't cheap. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> it was cool. You know, yeah. so I, I I think I think Erica, you said you know you kind of said it. The point is to get to know yeah. one another. I mean, yeah. I'm just being just be somewhere like like I'll tell you what what I would say if I were advising somebody if I were counseling somebody, I would say don't go somewhere where you can't talk. Right. You want to be able to have a conversation with somebody and look right. at them and. 
have some conversation and discuss stuff and kind of see see how they think and start to get inside their mind and see what makes them tick. If this mm-hmm. is somebody that you're really thinking about dating seriously right. going on into the future, you can't do that at a movie. It's kind of hard to do. Like even I love music. I go to concerts all the time. Mm-hmm. And even a concert is tough to do that. So I would say if the point is, hey, let's get to know one another, then let's all right, cool. Let's let's grab Starbucks or let's, you know, let's sit in the park and 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 you know, do something. I yeah. what, I, I don't necessarily find, think find that find something where you can talk. That the first date has to be the let's get to know each other. I think as long as it's the are you cool enough for me to see again? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's like cool. we can am I you cool, all right, fine. Yeah. You, so even if we do go to that that uh concert and you don't got on no no you know what I'm saying somebody <laughs> said ESPN was the place that's right that was thank the spot you. thank you that's right we the spot whole time it really was it, it really was, was. It definitely was, like was a, a spot yeah it was like Penn Social tried to like adults. mimic that a little bit Who? really Penn yeah Social. I've been there a couple of times that's cool I've never been there yeah, yeah. I like Penn Social I've been there to watch, like watch games yeah, and stuff yeah, yeah. Oh. so let's get right into this tea so, Mary J. Blige filed for divorce from her husband of 12 years, right? Who was once her manager up until she filed, man, up until she filed for divorce, he was her manager. Mm. So, now, he is, he signed a prenup. He's basically saying the prenup should be thrown out because he was not, didn't have a lawyer when he signed it. He was kind of naive to the whole prenup thing. So he wants it thrown out and he's requesting $129,000 a month because he said that she was the breadwinner during out the course of their marriage and she got him accustomed to a certain lifestyle. <laughs> so I'm going to give you all a breakdown of his list of demands. The, sh- the, sh- the, sh- the stuff is crazy. Now, my thing is, it, I, I, I explained this to, when I posted this on Facebook and other people posted, I said, now, if they had children together, I could probably side with him a little bit on some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. They have no kids together. How long were they married? 12 years. Wow, so he wants $8,000 for a private a... chef. Gotta eat. 3200 for a personal trainer. Gotta stay in shape. He wants a $1,000 a month clothing allowance. Five thousand dollars to continue paying his parents each five his parents. So he want her to pay to take care of his parents. Seventy one thousand dollars for all the for his rental properties. Five thousand to support his two children from his past relationship. Twenty five hundred for auto expenses and transportation. <laughs> Fifty seven hundred for maintenance and repairs on his properties. Fifty seven hundred dollars for groceries. A month and a chef, so basically he's eating thirty six thousand. He, <laughs> Lord, he wants mercy. her to pay all Goodness. his charitable donations of twenty two thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars for entertainment gifts wow. and vacations. <laughs> he wants his attorney's fees paid, which is a hundred thousand dollars, and his accounting fees of thirty thousand dollars. That's his request. And that adds up to how much? This is in total, but I guess it will be broken down a month. So he wants a hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars a month. For him to even ask that, that first is that Mary J. Blige is getting that back. Of course he knows heavily. because he was her manager. She's heavily. She's he was her manager, back. so he knows her deals, her money. Mm-hmm. You know, what she got? Apple Music sponsors. She, I mean, she endorsement. Bank. Yeah, she bank. got, so, she got quite Birdie, and been around for King, Big yeah, Bang. Yeah. 30 got them. She's been along, around a long time. So, of course, everybody is dragging him because they're like, that's ridiculous. And then you have men now coming and saying, well, women do it all the all time. All the time. So, this poses the question. Question: Do you think that you should be a, you are supposed to take care of a ex spouse after divorce? And if you do, yeah. is this reaching? Is this like ridiculous? So, as weird as it sounds to say, one, I, I, I'll just say I, I think divorce in general is sad. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know the details of their relationship. I've heard some things, but I won't mm-hmm. speculate on the air and do all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think divorce is sad. So I'll just say that to get out and get that out of the way. But let's not get caught up in the numbers because we're talking about people who are multi, multi millionaires. Right. right. I think the general idea is that there's a level of maintenance, you know, and sort of a level of sharing that has to happen when you begin to split marital assets and all that. Um, and I think because of the number, it kind of shocks people. But if thirteen thousand so, dollars for food a month, yes, let's read but, it. What are you eating? Is, like you said, <laughs> but, that but, is part but, of his lifestyle as but, of right but now. The point is, it's it's, and I'm sure from his attorney's perspective, it's 
What does your lifestyle look, you know, look like now? And estimate how much does it cost to maintain that lifestyle? Bump it up a little bit because you need a number that you can negotiate with. Mm -hmm. And that's the number that they lead with. He's not going to get $129,000 a month, mm -hmm. but that's the number you lead with. It's like when, you know, it's like when somebody tries to sell you a car, they tell you 50, nah, this joint is $50,000. You're mm -hmm. like, nah, I give you, I'll give you 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you probably leave paying 40. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So I'm sure there, I'm sure it's a negotiation tactic, but I think the, the general beyond the numbers is that. He contributed in some form to her success, Absolutely. right? And I think it's fair that he become. I guess I hate. I hate even saying compensated, but that he realized the <laughs> benefits. That well, he realized has, the benefits. It, yeah, of his contribution wrote on the way out. Two checks for eighty five thousand dollars, right? So apparently, the agreement in the alimony was lump sum payment. She's already paid eighty five thousand twice. I don't Ooh. know what the lump sum payment agreement was. And I guess to him, that's that ain't enough. It's not peanuts. Enough. It's not yeah. enough. It's peanuts. Well, it's not gonna, well, I, that's I, not going to keep gas like, in my Bentley. Yeah, it's right. just like the fact that you want her to take care of your kids is not her. She didn't adopt these kids. These were her stepchildren. She didn't formally adopt them. I don't think that's her responsibility. So I think I, I don't really know how I feel. I, I feel like this should be something that is done, but not forever. I think there has to be like a time yeah. where it's like, up. okay, look. You know, for the next five years, it, Here's what it looks yeah, like. or you know, y'all was here, y'all was together for twelve, and come up with some kind of formula to right. that degree to say, all right, well, you know, this is what you're used to. Because hey, if you are used to eating good, and, and then you stop, you'll get sick. That's just the way it works. Like, <laughs> it's, it's what it is. <laughs> well, Chris, I never eat McDonald's, and then I go and eat it now. And I'm pretty much. But my I see why they tour. say it's cheaper to keep her when they say when you look at stuff like this. Absolutely. I can see why people just say, "Well, we might as well just stay married." So think about it like this: and just have let's, an open merger, whatever they decide to do. Let's say Mary's worth. I don't know. Let's say Mary's got a hundred million in the bank, just mm -hmm. to come up with a number, right? And that's what her situation looks like, right? So imagine how tricky it gets when you got maybe ten thousand in the bank, right? Right. And you go through a divorce and you got to begin to split stuff up and figure out, you know, who's going to. By early, what. you got to spend a little bit that you got. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, I mean, so it I, again, I don't I, I think people get shocked by the numbers. Yeah. Right. And, I, and then they, I, just, I agree, and man. They, I, I don't they think get shocked like by the number thing. and then the fact that they're dragging him because they like he a man and that's. That, but not, but and like, like he, like he said. But that's why I said to, women do it. Yeah. So, but in some cases, the women have children that they're trying to take care of, or whatever the case may be. So, why is this frowned upon? Because this is a man asking for the spousal right. support. And because and of his why contribution. Do we know, and why do we know the breakdown of what he's asking for anyway? <laughs> it's why, public why record. Why is you know that? that? I know, but why is that our business? <laughs> yeah. I don't need to know that. That's not yeah. my business. But yeah. well, that's we need a topic for spilling the tea. <laughs> <Back>. Good idea. <laughs> That thank you, great, thank you, can do. That was, that was a great idea, but I, I like I I understand that you know in in a marriage, you know, part of that sanctioning is that you know I help you become who you are, you help mm -hmm. me become who I am, mm -hmm. and so unfortunately, because money is how we get by on in life. Right. If it was apples and oranges, literally, then we wouldn't be. You got to give him all those oranges. It's like yeah, he, he eats oranges, but yeah. we talking about money, and so. That's the only real way, like you said, to compensate for what you brought to the table for all those years. Mm -hmm. and, and there's no real way to say, well, you wouldn't have made it thus far without me, or you wouldn't have made that X amount of dollars. But I always me. wondered that with celebrities, especially celebrity women, because I it's a number of them who marry their managers. Mm -hmm. Mariah Curry married her manager. Kelly mm -hmm. Rowland married her manager. So it's just like... That's a thin line you crossing when you going from working with this person to that person now, knowing all of your that that's you I mean, the trust has to be one hundred percent there. If you say, Okay, I'm gonna marry this person who 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 seals all the deals for me, he knows everything that's coming in. And then if it don't work, that's it. Like Well well, well, you gotta think about it like this. And I don't know I don't know them, so I'll speak yeah. in general terms. Mm -hmm. The idea going in is that this is th let this let is it. Right, right. right. right? So that we go in with the, you know, hopefully with the notion that till death do us part. Right. I Absolutely. mean that. Absolutely. And as you're married, you go through the process, you know, therefore shall a man, a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. And you, the two become one flesh. Absolutely. You spend, you spend time together melding and building your lives together and learning one another and spiritually and emotionally and mentally becoming one flesh. Mm -hmm. So you, you go in with the intention of, okay, we came in as two people. But we're gonna we're gonna you know go into the situation and become one. Okay. So, so then when I... you split it, so then when you split it, 
it's tricky because you're kind of you're, you're trying to figure out how do you split a whole. Right. So this is where being equally yoked comes in to play. In regards to financially, like you you being equal to your wife or you being equal to your husband, that when you got one this that's is, solely the breadwinner, this is where that prenup comes in. Yeah. Well, 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 so so here, let me let me put on the legal hat. <laughs> they had a prenup, right? right. And he wants it thrown out. He wants it thrown out because, if I understand correctly, he didn't have an attorney present when he signed it. Right. Which anyone will tell you does not void a contract. Absolutely. You put not. a John Hancock on something, unless you can prove that there's some actual deceptive practice going on. Right. Or, like, I, I purposely try to get over on you, or you didn't have the capacity or the understanding as an retarded. adult to, like, if, if you didn't have the mental capacity. Right, right. To, to agree you can say retired on spending. I, I can't say that. That's, that's not cool. <laughs> we say so retired. That's not cool. <laughs> that's not cool. <laughs> so but, but if you didn't have the mental capacity to do that, then yeah, that that's a different conversation. But he signed something. He was grown. Yeah. Right. And right. in the business. Right. Right. So he knew. Come on, man. Yeah. Miss, yeah. Yeah, miss me. Miss yeah. me, Slim. Yeah. I, so so I get it. Divorce is nasty. Is ugly. Trust me. I've seen it. It's it's not pretty. But I. In terms of the financial thing being being equally yoked, I don't know if you can necessarily be equally yoked financially, because I mean somebody's always going to make more money, and you can you can divide that line a lot of different ways. So, mm -hmm. so when is divorce an option? Who I hear I, I you know okay so I was watching um Fast Battle Laugh um the other day mm -hmm. and you know he was saying that you know Shout he out does, big homie yeah he was saying that infidelity to him was not a reason to end your marriage. That and you know, unless you're being hurt in your marriage, like physically being abused and hurt, you know, then people would say, okay, I can see why that is grounds for divorce. So for me, to me, I, I first of all, like 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 previously said, like marriage is definitely the idea that it is you and I forever, and and that is what we always shooting and aiming to get to. We are, that's the end point forever. So there mm -hmm. is no end point. But I do understand that in life and as in human beings, that we are not always as smart as we was yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. And we make mistakes. And so because we make a decision and without, let's let's just take away from, let's just remove marriage and let's just talk about the mistakes that we make in life. Right. When we make these mistakes in life, we have the ability to go back and right those wrongs. Mm -hmm. Be, and, and, and that's what makes us a better person. That's what makes... Most most people will tell you that you learn most from your mistakes, mm -hmm. and so we we put um, this emphasis on the matrimony of marriage as if that can't be a mistake. And so then, because that's the mistake that you have to live with, sort of like birth. Now, birth is the it, that's what you have to live with. That came out of you. That is attached to you, and you really don't. I mean, the, I don't agree with it, but you can get rid of that as well. But in marriage, you never really, we're talking about two people. So that means that we have to trust that two people are being extremely honest. They are being extremely who they are and that you are, and you are making a decision based on all truth and you can be making that decision based on lies. So I feel like, I feel like divorce is necessary when the decision that you made isn't the decision that you believed in. I feel like if 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 you believed in something, and like for instance, if if I was if I wasn't a Christian mm -hmm. and I went to church and I said, okay, yeah, you know what, I, this that was a great message. I believe in God now, and then I, you know, I, I say, okay, yeah, I, I I confess with my heart. I mean, I confess with my mouth, believe, believe with all my heart, mm -hmm. right? That Christ is risen, risen from the dead, and then I leave, and then I go to Juma. Mm -hmm. And then I understand it to from a whole nother perspective. Mm -hmm. I reserve the right to say I don't really feel like that anymore because that and and that's and not promoting hopping from religion, yeah. but just yeah. as an example. That's so, a good point. I would just say this: talking about marriage and divorce is really tricky because every marriage is really, really, really different. Absolutely. And being now now being married, trust me, every marriage is different. Mm. Um. Even my marriage is different than what I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. Not in a good or a bad way. Right. It's just you come in with preconceived notions, you have expectations and all that. And living it out day to day is is honestly a little different than what I thought it was. And I love it. It's mm -hmm. great. And it's done more to mature me and grow me. My wife is amazing. So she makes it a lot easier. But just the 
boom. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the process of loving another person unconditionally, mm. um, the process of learning another person and trying to understand them um, in a way that kind of builds your bond. Mm. The, the process of cooperating, especially me, I grew up an only child. I'm used to doing everything myself on my own Absolutely. when I wanted to do it, how I wanted to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm a brat. Mm -hmm. So being Get able up. to being able to put that aside and try and collaboratively work with somebody, all that 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 does a lot in terms of, you know, sort of shaping you and helping you grow and mature. Right. Um, so that that makes marriage and divorce really tricky. But I will say, I think sometimes. I think we go in with a with these preconceived notions and we go in a little shallow. So we jump in sort of the we jump into, you know, the ocean only prepared to swim in the kiddie pool. Mm -hmm. Now, so I'm clear there are instances where I would say, you know what, there I've seen people get divorced and I get it where there's something abusive or something that that creates an unsafe environment for the home or creates an unsafe environment for one of the spouses and situations like that. I get it. Mm -hmm. So I, so I understand that. Um, but I will say that there is something to be said for working through difficulty. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. And I do think there are things depending on your level of commitment and your ability to hold to that commitment. I think God honors that commitment. I, I believe that. Um, and I think there, I think working through and trying to figure your way through things I think it can do a lot in terms of in terms of building that bond. Right. Um, I heard a I heard an old preacher say this once. He said, you know, someone came to them for counseling and he was like, man, look, I just think I married the wrong woman. And he was like, well, what if you loved her in a way that helped her grow into the right one? Right. That's 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 like I always say, like, I always feel like any two people could be married and be happily married for it. Any two. Like I can close my eyes and pick this guy and that woman if the idea is to be forever. Because when, again, because when that thought process is forever, then you understand that everything is just a stepping stone. Like every every moment or every disagreement is really only just this moment right here because tomorrow we got to figure out how to do something for next week. And both people got to, and see, but, but that's dope. And both people got to be committed to that. Absolutely. We Absolutely. both have to say, you know what? Look, you get on my nerves today. Right. You almost died this morning. <laughs> Like, you know what right. I'm saying? Because I almost, <laughs> right. almost caught a charge in this joint. <laughs> but, but we are both committed to making this work. We're both committed to saying, you know what? Look, divorce isn't an option. I heard I heard Will Smith say that years ago. Mm -hmm. Someone interviewed him and they were talking about he and Jada's marriage. And of course, you've heard all the other stuff. But right. what, what, what really stuck out to me, well, he was like, nah, divorce is not an option. Right. It's not on the menu. Right. So now that it's not on the menu and we both agree, and, and here's the key. We both agreed on that. Absolutely. We agreed that that's not an option. So what do we do? Figure in lieu, in lieu of that, we got to figure it out. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's I think there's something to be said for that and saying, you know what, yo, let's figure it out. Let's 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 squeeze every ounce of try out of this joint. Mm. And then, you know what, if you come to the end of it and say you can't, I, 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 I think if two people are both committed to that, I think, I don't know, I think I think it could work. Yeah, and that remind you know just so I'm clear, all you know, asking all the other wild stuff, and you you know, chopping up people and putting them in you know, ice boxes and all that other <laughs> crazy yeah. stuff that you, you kind of read about. But I'm saying, like I I think there's something to be said for two people being committed to saying, you know what, this is going to work, and we'll both put in the work to make it work. Absolutely, because I mean that's just that's what anything. This is all with anything that you want, especially when it comes to two people. Like you have to put in work because nobody has that same general idea about this, the, you know, uh, one topic or one thing. Like it's, there's not a same. There's a can you understand where I come from and I understand where you come from and whether we agree or not, we still going that way. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, but I, but I again because I because I once had the stance of you know the the uh, the religious base the divorces you shouldn't. But there are circumstances that just that that's not deep enough. That's not a deep enough request. To say you can't divorce because there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons that make sense to for divorce for me. <laughs> like I, like I, what? I, I, you I, can't, you can't, you can't no, I, I'd rather not. <laughs> I'm on my third divorce, so I ain't, no, I'm playing. 
Okay, so we kind of had this topic, Jason. Um, I like I think when we first started the show, at this it was studio, episode two. Okay, and it's, the topic was: Is the black community overchurched? So, so <laughs> let explain, so, explain, so, yeah, so, explain, yeah, explain, explain. Okay, so this was go ahead, Mark. So, um, so the conversation actually came from a conversation that was stemmed from a, me and another listener. Mm-hmm. Um, and we watched it. Um, I gave him a DVD to watch. And um, there was the guy, the, uh, the the guy who did the documentary, he was going around and he was, you know, asking uh, different different leaders, you know, did he feel that the community was over church? Um, I think pre- I may have seen this, but go ahead. Yeah, so his, and his precipice was on uh, that there's so many churches. I think it was the number was eighty five thousand at that time, and that's black community oriented churches. Mm-hmm. Um, and with with that being said, that is, that is not that ratio does not even resonate with any other culture. No one's going to church that much. No one. There's not that many churches in any other neighborhood. However, when you look at the grand scheme of things, we always are at the bottom of the totem pole. And when I say bottom of the total pole, I'm, I mean financially. Mm-hmm. Financially, uh, below the poverty line, we got the worst education, and then um, and then that was tied. It so in the conversation, then also what came about was that you know that the churches at this point, black churches, generate seventy one billion dollars in revenue on a yearly on a yearly basis, mm-hmm. and a number like seventy one billion dollars <laughs> to me looks like a lot of happiness in the community if it's put back to where it should go or if it's if that seed is sown in the right place mm-hmm. so that that then became well are we depending on it too are, are we depending on that corner too much are we walking into that building expecting too much or are there too many and so we, when we had the conversation there and, and um i try to look back over it because i i i I, before that show, I, we was just going live. It was live. I was like, I don't want to stutter, so I yeah. had my shit together. Long story short, <laughs> but but um, but but yeah. So so that that and so the guy. So we had a good conversation, good round. You should check it. That's episode two, y'all. WTTSradio.com, or y'all can follow that on Facebook. But um, but the the, the conversation just opened up a lot of different conversations, mm-hmm. and, and one of the things that was said was that we should definitely reopen it when a preacher comes in. So y'all waited for me. And now we have we Reverend Jay Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Um, One of the concerns that we brought up was just when we talked about the poverty lines is that you have a lot of churches that are in low income areas, right? Mm-hmm. And you have the, the, you know, they tithe, they, 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 they put a lot of these pastors on pedestals like they Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Like the, and, and, and they, they're not living they're not living the lifestyle of some of these pastors, right? Mm-hmm. So you have, I'm going, I'm tithing, I'm giving my 10% and I'm getting on the bus. Mm-hmm. And this my pastor's driving a Bentley and it's kind of like, I need help, help mm-hmm. me. Let- and they're not getting that help. So there's so many layers, there's so many layers to this. Um, Peel them back. I, I want to, yeah. So, Peel them preaching. So let me deal, so let me deal with that first one. Um, are there too many churches? Mm. Well, I would say an organization that carries a message of hope that when engaged correctly can affect change in a way that I don't believe anything else in the world can. I don't think you can have too much of that. So, 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 but, but the, wait, 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 okay, let me, gotcha. let, let me get through this. Um, so for the question of, are there too many churches? I think that's the wrong question. So okay. I'm, I'm that guy. That's like, right. Is this the right question? Or is you know, are, are we kind of moving in the right direction? I think the question has got to be, what are those churches doing to engage the people that that are in their church mm-hmm. coming every Sunday, mm-hmm. that are around their church mm-hmm. that may not be coming every Sunday, and reaching out to the people that kind of God puts in their sphere of influence. Mm-hmm. So, in other words, not just are there too many churches, it's are we being effective? It's are we being effective in doing the mission and going about the business that God gave us, you know, going out, preaching the gospel, sharing the love of Jesus Christ, sharing with people, loving people, trying to, you know, be a voice to the voiceless, trying to lift, you know, folks out of poverty and trying to do that kind of, are we doing that kind of work? Right. So that goes to the question of, well, you know, there's this, you quoted the $71 billion number, you know, let's just, let's just work with that one. Right. Where does that money go? 
Because that's the question everybody asks. Well, where's the money go? Is right. it for, for Preacher's Cadillac? Is it for the Jerry Curl Fund? Well, where is it going? Right. 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 And and the, and I think it's a valid question. Right. I think that's valid. If you're given to an organization, everything you has have an a, audit. Yeah, you right. have a right to know. Hmm. Is it going to what you know? So I guess I would ask, how transparent are those organizations being? And if you don't feel comfortable with their level of transparency, is is that really where God wants you sowing your seed? You right. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. God wants a cheerful giver. He doesn't want people beat over the head like, yeah, you got to give or life's going to suck. Absolutely. Like he wants people engaged in sharing their money and and enacting the principle of giving him first fruits cheerfully, right. not begrudgingly because you feel like, you know, you have some, to. Yeah, because somebody's beating you over the head with it. Right. So so I guess, you know, and, and let me let me back up. Someone said, well, you know. I'm giving and I'm giving my 10% and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not living at a certain, living at a certain level. And that's a valid, that's a valid concern. Mm -hmm. The question, if I were sitting with somebody one-on-one, I would say, all right, well, first let's look at what you're doing with the whole, because my, my guess would be the problem isn't in that 10%. It's in what we do with the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Right. So are we doing, are we being wise stewards of the resources that we're, that we're giving? And then I would turn that same question to the church and say, hey, church, what are you doing with the 10% that people are giving you? Are you investing in the community? Are you, you know, doing benevolence? Are you doing things that lift people and help people around you and not just, you know, make life better for you? Because I, I'll tell you honestly, you know, ministry is great and I love it. But there are easier ways to make a buck. Absolutely. So if, if well, somebody, would, some if people, somebody would just so, if somebody would just in it for for the money, you can find other ways to make a buck. Right. <laughs> I, I so so that. so let me let me let me um let me kind of go back a little bit. Yeah. Because are there too many churches? That's not necessarily the question. Right. Is are are we over churched? And what I mean by over churched mm-hmm. is is because, like you said, there there definitely there definitely needs to be an outreach, but there. There, there has to be an audit trail that if this, if it's if it's this many churches, this is the result of this. You know, you, like the the people, my people are in much better position because of this. Mm-hmm. And and so and and that's why I ask: Is it not? Is it too many? But are we being are we being pumped into this? Are we are we hope? being rocked? And, and like you said, yeah. Are you, are we being pumped into a hope stage? Where that's all we're doing mm-hmm. is hoping because um, and I, and one of the points I made, which is it is kind of out of context now, but when when I when I think about church or what I think church should be ideally, which is I haven't yet to see one, is I think that it, it shouldn't be weird that I go to church on Sunday and oh man, this is a surprise algebra lesson. Be, it, it, it's that's funny, but that's just an example of it, it, unpack that for me though. Absolutely, because so clear. because because understanding algebra is it, it makes you a better person. So mm-hmm. we so we go to church and we we pretty much get the same uh, scheme of lesson uh, to follow Christ to an extent. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm being very vague yeah, yeah, because yeah. It's, it's you can't general. really deal into it right, dig into it right. But we we pretty much get the same scheme where we get our we get our point and our topic. And I'll go forward and I'll low part of the topic and I'll high part of the topic and then your take home. And that's what we do mm-hmm. every Sunday for 30 years. Mm-hmm. If I get a, if I get an algebra lesson in there or if I get a, a T account lesson, because because this is a going forward thing, too, like we just talked about with marriage. This is mm-hmm. a going forward thing. This isn't a keep giving me this hope thing, mm-hmm. because if you keep giving me hope, then we are stuck. Mm-hmm. We, that's why the question is it. We're still hoping about things. There's no, there's no. Well, you know, this church does this for this community, and we're sending. You know, there's. It has to be more than just what we're getting. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Like the typical church is that was an idea at one point in time. Mm-hmm. So, so ideally, so break it down. If you went, if if you could kind of structure it however you want it. You you said the algebra lesson, but tell me what you would get from church on a just give me just pick a Sunday. You show up, you walk in. What what do you get? Um, I will get I will get a closer walk with God because that is the number one. Uh, you know, to be in tune spiritually is key. Mm-hmm. But I will also become a lot more business savvy. 
Okay. I I will also become I, I would also understand what to do with this dollar. You know okay. what I'm saying? I will understand how to invest. Okay. I would understand, you know, it So let me stop you. So so let me cuz this is the question I would ask anybody. Right. So you got there, right? Mm -hmm. Someone stood up there and who sought God, hopefully, um studied and prepared and they they've got something ready for you, right? Mm -hmm. And they deliver it hopefully in a way that's informative, in a way that's informational, in a way that's inspiring. Absolutely. Right? And you sit there and listen. So when you leave, then what happens? Because here's here's where we get stuck. I believe too many of us in the body of Christ are stuck here. I think we go listen to great stuff on Sundays and we don't do anything with it yeah, throughout the rest of the week. Not, but, but, but when I say we don't do anything with it, not just do we live it, it's are we engaged in any other way yeah. throughout the week. So what else are we doing that helps you grow spiritually? Because right. here's the reality. Um, did you you play sports, right? Yeah. How many days a week did you practice? Uh, every day. Exactly. Absolutely. If you just went to practice one day a week, can can LeBron get better going to practice one day a week? Probably not. Exactly. Can can <clears throat> did Steph Curry become that good of a shooter just shooting jumpers in the backyard just on Saturdays? Probably not. Right. He did it in the snow. Right. And he did it in the rain Absolutely. and he did it with gloves on and he did it when he had to shovel out the driveway and all that. Well, they were rich. So maybe somebody shoveled it for him. Right. But my point is there was a, there was a consistent engagement in the process of him growing as a as a hooper. Absolutely. Um, when we go to school, we, we take that same we take that same attitude. And what I find weird, quite honestly, and, and, and it I'm going to say when I've seen it in myself, it frustrated me and it, it challenged me to grow. So what am I doing those other six? What am I doing those other six days of the week that help me understand what's going on in the church? What am I doing the other six days of the week that help me understand that message that was preached? What else am I listening to? What else am I reading? What else am I engaged in that feeds me spiritually? Mm -hmm. And then you do that. So think about it. The idea of of coming to church every Sunday. You said a closer walk with God, a closer right. walk with Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's relationship. Right. And at the end of the day, I, I, I say this all the time. What God wants is relationship. He doesn't right. want to just beat you over the head with a set of rules. Right. He wants to live with us and walk with us and roll with us to kind of to help us do what we do. Right. And and, and so that he can lead us. Mm -hmm. You can't build a relationship being that distant. I can't just speak to my wife on on Sundays. Right. Right. I got to be engaged with her every day of the week. And when I've been distant from her, let's say like like if I go out of town and I've been gone for five days, when I come back, I feel the, I feel the effects of that distance. Right. And it's the same way with our relationship with God. When we spend our time away from God and we just come on Sundays and say, you know what? I need this. I need this. I need this. I need this. That's dope. I got it. And for, for me, as, you know, as the as the guy who's in the seat that has to minister and do all that. Then yeah, you gotta do you gotta deliver and give people something that's gonna help them. But the question has to be like, yo, what am I doing that's gonna help me engage with that? And what am I doing to engage in that process? So, so and and I, I agree with you one hundred percent that uh one of my one of the things that I live by is you judge a man by the work of his hands. Whatever whatever the work that he chose to put in, mm -hmm. that's what he should get out of it. But I but but the but but the question still comes by way of uh, care for the way we're sold, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and for and for the and for those who just don't quite understand, because when they are coming into this temple, they mm -hmm. are coming for understanding mm -hmm. and not no just doubt. relationship. You know what I'm saying? So everything that you said is 100 percent true as far as building a relationship, but it's but that's the relationship with God, and that is definitely one part of it. But what about community? What about mm -hmm. what about Again, what about these numbers? You understand? Like, mm -hmm. because again, you only can really say what is actually happening. And so if and, and so that number per se is saying that there is a lot of church, but it's not a lot of success. Well, well, again, I don't know every, you know, you name what, 80, 83,000 churches. Right. And I don't know what they do. Right. Understood. I, now, I, I will say this, though. I do believe that churches should be investing in the community around. Absolutely. Them. I believe that. Absolutely. In tangible ways. I believe that. Um, so whatever you can do to be a blessing to people, because one of the great things you saw Jesus do, he fed people before he before they listened to his message. Like mm -hmm. he did. He met physical needs and met actual needs so that he can say, like, yo, here, here's who I am. Mm -hmm. 
you know, people, there's a, there's an old saying, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Mm -hmm. And I think all too often- Black Panthers did that too. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Black Panthers did a great job of doing that where they right. had a message they were trying to promote, but they fed thousands they, they of kids sure breakfast. You, yeah, they, they made sure everybody ate. Absolutely. And I think there's something to be said for that. And now I'm not saying necessarily every church has to have a breakfast program, mm -hmm. but I but think- But make sure a, they eat. But I think it's a great model to say, look, what are we doing to be, you know, to be- I guess, good stewards of the resources that God Absolutely. allow us to have so that we can just do more than just preach messages and do that kind of stuff. And how are we investing in the community? And, and, how, are we, and how are we trying to stop school, it? They fed us. Right. Yeah, not me. I didn't, I didn't quite get that. <laughs> you but, but, no, but, but, you go too. <laughs> not, I don't remember getting fed in Sunday school. You didn't get I'm fed in to... Sunday school? Did you get fed in Sunday school when you were little? I don't know if I went to Sunday school when I was little. No, we was, <laughs> my mother played no games. We was in Sunday school. I went sometimes, but I don't yeah, know if I, went I just I just think that I just think that the de the dependency that comes from going to church can I, I think that that should be governed within the church a, a different way that we mm -hmm. see success mm -hmm. that if if because you know people are coming in they coming in and they are hopeless mm -hmm. you know they coming down there on their last and and a lot of times i mean you can uh, they come they come in and they and they ex they ex they're expecting something right then and there mm -hmm. and what you give them is what is tangible okay you understand what but but here's the thing and and i i believe god works miracles i think absolutely. he still i think he still does it absolutely but when, if you've got 30 years of a, of a particular mentality, mm -hmm. I can't undo that. Yeah. In I say that I can't on the show every time. in 30 minutes. Absolutely. Now, what I can do and what I hopefully am able to do, I'm able to paint a picture and, and, and show you God in a way that draws you a little closer and makes right. you curious about what's next. Right, right. You see what I mean? Absolutely. And I think you can do that. But in terms of, you know, hey, I came in with all these issues or I came in with all these mindsets and these attitudes and these habits, that's not necessarily going to go away just because you heard a message. Right. But hopefully there, there's an engagement and there's a process right. where you're continually growing. And, and it's in terms of the church, that the church is doing its part and saying, look, what can we do to move people from here to here to here? I, that's why I believe, I believe the church should be active in justice work. Absolutely. Um, we as a church, we're, we're active in, in, in reentry. And advocating for you know sentences to be commuted of, yeah, of, of you know nonviolent offenders, um, and that's uh, there's a bunch of stuff I can name, but I'm saying right. I believe that for me, the gospel of Jesus Christ and my love of God makes me love His people in a way that I want to see their lives better, and there are things around me that I see that hold people back from being all that they can be and being better and seeing that success that God, I believe God wants people to be successful. I don't think it's all about being successful and having a big house and a car, but success in being all that God created you to be so that you can make a difference in the world. Right. And whatever I can do to help people move in that direction, I think that's part of my job as a pastor. I Absolutely. don't think it's just me I don't think it's just me teaching you the Bible. Absolutely. Hopefully I'm teaching you in the Bible in a way that illustrates scripture so that you can see how to be better right. and so that we can grow. But I think there's other work that goes along with it. And you got to be clear on what you're called to do because everybody can't do everything. Everybody ain't going in the hood. That's right. not what everybody's called. Everybody's not going to Indonesia right. to preach the gospel in the jungle. That's not everybody's called. Mm -hmm. But it's being clear on where did, where did God say go? And, I, and, and going back to your point about the resources, I think that's key. You know, and I would say, look, if you're in a church where you like, look, I'm giving and I'm not quite sure exactly what's happening with the money. money yeah. Ask, ask, the, ask yep. the question. That's the same and, thing. and you know what? So, and that People was, don't that feel was, comfortable doing that yeah, because they're like, well, that's the man of God. But yeah. no, like, nah, demand from the man of God. That, but, that's, but ask. The, and, and I'm not saying be disrespectful, stand nah. up in the middle of service, yeah. service <laughs> like, hey, Slim, where my money at? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But yeah. but but I, I think there's a way to be respectful and I, say, look, I, you know, I have some questions about what we're doing here financially. I've been contributing. I've been doing whatever, whatever. And there's some things I want to know. Right. And I think to I think to a large extent, you can get some answers. Now, they yeah. may not tell you what, you know, what Every people's penny, salary yeah, is or yeah, all that stuff. Absolutely. But I think you can figure out like, all right, look, this is what goes to benevolence. This is what goes to outreach. This is what goes to this. And this is, you know. So the, so the reason why the, the question was so attractive to me, because it not only does it it, it poses it's a great question because because it's analysis based. It's like, well, yeah. you know, we we don't see the result of this. If you go to work and they don't see the result of what you're doing, then you're gonna get fired. And, <laughs> and that's a great point because 
I think that with with what we do and everything, I think that there should always you should always put pressure on on the head. And, and, and yeah, like I, I think that that pressure is needed. I think that pressure is needed in relationships. I think mm-hmm. that pressure is needed at work. I think that pressure is needed in church. That you put the pressure on on whoever the head of that ministry is, or whoever the head of that is, or in that relationship to say, "What are you doing to make everything greater?" Like because that's what you're here for. That is your point. Well, that's not that's not. Not everything. Everything. You ain't, you ain't well, there to make everything. Well, you are there to make everything. Right? No, you're not. Because why not? <laughs> I am a man. Right. Sent back home. Everything call, that you can get your hand, everything in your domain is everything. Okay. All right. Cool. So the right. stuff that I'm called to do, yes. Absolutely. I got you. Because so, you saying, and, and, cause you're saying everything, everything, but, yeah. everything, everything is tricky. <laughs> but, but, everything but, is everything. <laughs> but, but I say everything because like you said, like if we go to the, to the jail systems and we start actually putting some of that money into getting these laws changed and everything, like everything that can make this community better because it's not just teaching people how to walk with God. That's not just what it is. And I and that may not they may not that may not come off as I see I know sharp, what you're saying. I, I know what right? you're saying. I, I think you mean it. I, I mean I mean I, definitely you mean teach it. me how to walk with God. Right. But that's not it though. That's not where it stops because that's not where that was not it in the Bible. That was, it wasn't just we the children of Israel wasn't just trying to figure out they would it was more to just walking with God. It mm. was it was it was it was being a great community as well, it was being able to be the chosen people was, is to be the people. Yeah. And so I just feel like that I just feel like we that pressure is has so always you, needs you to be like asserted. Some black churches lost sight of that. I feel like I feel like that is I, I feel like that is is really I'm trying to be politically correct. No, nah, right? you know what? A lot of churches lost sight of it. I'll right. say you don't have to say it, I will. Right. Yeah, churches lose sight of it because you're led by a human. Right. And you got dreams, you got ambitions, and maybe you didn't grow up with X, Y, and Z, and here's an opportunity. And wow, that that's a big check. And and that gets a little tricky. Yeah, and and that's and 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 I'm saying there are I think there are organizations that just lose that just kind of get off track. Absolutely. And every you know what? There's a whole lot of churches. And every church isn't doing necessarily what they're supposed to do. Absolutely. And we see it in the news because every time, you know, somebody messes up, it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. As soon as we hear about that, we we talk about that all day. Mm-hmm. But in I, I'd say in in all my years, my experience has been that that churches have been that have been, you know, to the to the fullest extent that they can forthright and up, you know, in terms of, you know, here's what's going on, here's what we're trying to do. Here's where we're going and really trying to do the best they can to spread the message of Jesus Christ. Right. But yeah, the, everybody doesn't get it right. And right. that's just reality. And we, we've got to do better. And and what, I, what I'd what i love to see is us doing a little better in the community. Absolutely. To say, you know, in the community, I mean, the church community, to not just point fingers and say, oh, you messed up. Oh, this person stole. Oh, this person did this. Oh, this person did that. How can we lift one another and help one another be effective at the mission because right. at the end of the day we've all got the same mission. Right. And how can we help one another instead of just kicking one another when we're done? Absolutely. So I think that would go a long way too because the because people who don't go to church see that. Right. And they say, and, "Wow, and, they 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 eat their own." So right. why do I want to be a part of that? Right. So I think that goes a long way towards perception too. Right. But that's 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 a valid that's a valid concern, man. Yeah, and and, and like I say, I, I never want to come off like I'm anti-church in no way, shape, form, or fashion, right? Because that's the, I I I I was raised in church from since I since I came out the womb, pretty oh, much. Oh, oh Kojic boy, absolutely. Ah. But I never ever been afraid <laughs> to ask the question. Not not to my not ever. Like when when you read when you, when you telling me stuff about the Bible, I'm asking questions like, oh, Adam and Eve did what? Oh, why I get punished for that? You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna mm-hmm. ask the question. I need to know. And if you and if you can't give me an answer for it, well, don't. I, I don't want you to just. I don't want you to divert this stuff with just going back to that hope sale again. But just it, it's coming. It's, you know, wait for it. You know what, man? You know the most. You know the most powerful statement I think I've ever heard is. What's that? I don't know. Good answer. Good answer. I, because- I think uh, I I heard. You know. It's funny. I heard my pastor say that years ago, and he probably wouldn't even remember if I told him about it. Mm. But and I don't even recall the question, and it wasn't anything deep. It was it was something more specific, I think, to a person's situation. And someone was like, "So what do I? You know, what's X, Y, and Z?" He said, 
you know, I, I don't know. Right. Now, here's here's I can advise you this and I can kind of show you this from experience. And here's what I've seen. Mm. But I don't know. I don't know. And I think there's the there's a pressure on they us. Know everything. Yeah, there's I know a pressure everything. that that I had that we have all the answers and we don't. Right. We don't have all the answers. We go to school. We study. We do all that stuff. We pay attention. We read. A, a man said said years ago, you know, you should you should prepare with the with the newspaper in one hand and the Bible in the other. So that you, you know, grounded in the word, but understanding current events and what's going on in the world. Today. Right. Speaking but but at, the end, the but at the end of the day, the Bible never it, stopped happening. It just, yeah. that's what's recorded. It, right. It, 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 so, so, so we, there's certain, you know what, it, you're going to come to stuff and you, you got to be able to say, you know what, I don't know. Right. And, and I don't, or I don't have the answer to that. Let me think about it. Let me pray about it. Let me go do some research. Let me get back to you. Mm-hmm. Email is great. Right. <laughs> you know. But speaking of current events, man, I was waiting on you all to get here. I was talking to Donnell, and um, we were talking about the Jasmine Sullivan comments that oh, she Lord. made on Thomas Clay. Did you hear? Oh, so you have a he's bad since I hear to been on social yeah. media. So basically, Thomas Clay, I don't know you, you know who that is. He is, is he's a gospel singer. He passed away in his sleep like okay. a few days ago. So she posted um, a memorable moment, but a lot of he was people, so he was so dope by the yeah, way. Yeah, they dragging her for being insensitive because the memory she posted was basically saying like <clears throat> he was almost like stalking her um, in regards to like oh he would send me inboxes and he would pop up at my shows and it was a lot of people just felt that it was insensitive of her the way she worded it i mean she went on and on it's a long post well it's it's gone it's gone now it's gone now yeah. oh okay so she has deleted it it's gone now jasmine sullivan my boo too by the way <laughs> oh man one boo. of my Hold favorite so, singers. so thomas clay where can i get a song um so i don't know of anything that, like really anything like really mainstream, mainstream that you would know but but oh, but he was sorry Daniel said falling did you hear it? how'd that go I sing it sing it down there <laughs> 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 but yeah, dude, dude. Let me tell you something, dude. Like, like oh, I've heard. Dude, I'm, I'm pretty no sure doubt. I've heard his music. I just, the name yeah. is isn't resonating right now. Yeah. So basically, in a nutshell, she was saying, um, she says like I didn't know him very well. What I do know is I gave him my number accidentally through a friend, and he reached out consistently for a year. I think I replied maybe three times, but that never stopped him from writing me. He was determined in all caps. Right. Um, I remember him bringing me flowers to his show and saying friend and him realizing. Isn't isn't all this good stuff? Then, uh, yeah, I was going to say, it's, I'm not saying bad to me. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just yeah. her memory. And then, so basically she's saying after, you know, him being determined to meet her and when she heard his gift, she was just like, oh, wow, he's amazing. Da, 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 da. Right. I personally don't think that she meant it the way that people was taking it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't think she was trying to be insensitive. It was just she just saying this is how he was just consistent in regards to trying to meet me. Right. But people were saying, and that's that she, it. That's a good memory. Yeah, I don't think it was bad. Let me say this. <laughs> Let me say this. Facebook. Oh yeah. And emotion are dangerous bedfellows. Hell did you, you get? A, did you take? A, did you think she was being so offensive when I you thought, read it? So so I see what people read. I, I see what people said. I, it's too much I, to read. You can read I, it in your own time. I get it. I don't think she meant any offense by it. And one thing you got to understand um, is that when people feel, you know, when people are emotional, people people express that in different ways. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not always that articulate right. when, when I'm emotional. Mm-hmm. Right. And the, the unfortunate thing is, you know, when you put that on Facebook, that memorializes it for the entire world to see. Right. And then when you're famous... Everyone pays attention to every little thing you say, expecting every little thing you say to be perfect and perfectly worded, perfectly vetted, like your P, like your PR person sat there and checked it out before you uh, posted it. And when you and, read it, you read it from your own And mind. you read it from yeah. your own perspective. So if you're yeah. feeling so, some so, kind of way about him dying and then you read that, of course yeah. it's going to... So, so, so yeah, it read a little weird and there was some stuff that... You, all right, cool. But at the end of the day, does she mean anything by it? No. Did he I touch her on the butt? 
Yeah, like, no. like he didn't say. It he was didn't basically say, her saying like he was just persistent in meeting her, right. and she didn't know any. She didn't know who he was, and I then mean, when she finally heard him, she was just like, "Oh wow, he's amazing, he's dope." I but mean, people he took wasn't that outside, as her, he wasn't outside her crib, like stalking like, her, like, and like hiding like, in the bushes and yeah, nothing. Yeah, so. right, right. it's like people are so sensitive. I just but it's the end. Of I don't know Jasmine Sullivan from a can of paint. You've met her, but it's just like to me, I don't get that arrogant type of vibe she's definitely her. not that though yeah she's so i'm just like i don't her. think she meant any she didn't mean it the way people took it and I, they're dragging her again for it's like on it's like media. anything else we all, all all three of us we all post stuff on the internet and i don't know about you guys there's plenty of times where either i want to post something and then I think about it, I, and then I, I say, me. then I say, nah. Mark, not Mark. Mark, Mark maybe Mark, Mark doesn't. Post, I aim, I aim to rub you the wrong way. No, that's, okay, that's so what I'm here I, for. So okay, so did y'all watch the Michelle movie? I, I did not. I did. I heard about it. My wife you watched my wife. it? My okay, wife, so uh, people are basically saying that they felt that you know she lied. Dr. Dre didn't beat her like that, and things like that. This is my thing, I, and I made this very clear on some of the people's comments that I pages that I commented on. Oh, it's TV. They're going to make it dramatic. Some things may have happened mm -hmm. and it didn't happen that way, but they're going to make it this way for TV purposes. So that's the reason why 9.4 million people watched it. Mm -hmm. But Whew. and then they're saying, well, <laughs> numbers, yeah, she they were, numbers on the board. Right yeah, they were talking about, oh, she she a hoe because she had a baby by Shook. Oh, no, nah, she a hoe, though. Come on. Dog. I don't care what she I mean, is. They, that doesn't give her. On, the, that doesn't give. Oh, she was a hoe. I don't get Come on, man. You can't unhoe no. yourself. Can you unhoe yourself? I don't know. But what I'm Can trying to tell you is, I don't care what she did with her vagina. That does not give a man the right to beat her oh, like Oh, definitely not. Definitely not. And so that's what a lot of, that's what my argument was with a lot of people. Because they were saying, well, her character is flawed. So because she had a baby by Dre and Shug. So I can't take her word that she actually got beat. I'm Here's like, are thing. you kidding me? So here, here, <laughs> we're in a really tricky time in society because it seems like, you know, well, well, one. Dr. Dre can't be a woman beater. Well, one, <laughs> those allegations aren't new. Yeah. Right. And you've got a whole generation of people that are probably, I'm a little older than both of y'all, but that are probably maybe 10 years younger than me that don't remember mm -hmm. those allegations. Mm -hmm. So they hear this stuff and it's new information to them. Mm -hmm. So they react. And all they know is Beast by Dre Dre. They right. don't know. They don't know. N.W.A. Dre. They don't know <laughs> world class wrecking, wrecking crew Dre. Yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but but the, it comes off as new information. So so there's that visceral reaction when we're like, yeah, we've been through that. It's just, mm -hmm. on, but but one thing that I've noticed about, about us kind of in this social media age it's different when you see something portrayed on screen. Mm -hmm. Cause think of all the stuff that we've heard about happening, you know, but then when you see it on screen, it's like, Ooh, it just, mm -hmm. it just brings about this reaction to it. Right. But my thing is this, why, why, why can't we believe her? Why does she have to be alive? Because they say she slept around, and but, she, but, but, so but, they but here's the thing. So they don't believe everything that happened because she was, and, and I even read somewhere where somebody said it was kind of, well, she deserved it. She out there slinging, slinging, but slinging it, miss, whatever. Miss yeah, me with that. I was like, but, what? Uh, it just caught me off guard as some of the comments that I was seeing but, regarding but, but it. But here's the thing. And I know if you probably made, won't crack a joke, but I'm trying to be serious he, right so, now. So before he cracks a joke, I before he cracks it, I'm not cracking. I was going to say, I would advise you not to. But, <laughs> but before before he gets to that, if, if, if he made a movie, portraying her sleep let's say the movie was his his part of the story was she slept with this dude this dude this mm -hmm. dude this dude this dude she was a drug addict she was this she was this she was that right you would take him at his word right yeah <laughs> so why is that why why is that stuff because it's always Dre. Like, yeah I, it's yeah no no no, no. but 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 it's not just that it it it's it's we have a hard time believing women when they're victims mm-hmm we're always looking for the justification. We're always looking for the hole in it. We're always looking for the problem. And don't be wrong. I, they I don't play, necessarily they, they, agree with that. Though. Okay, that's cool. I, we, I, we we don't have to agree. But I, I'm saying I feel like I feel like I feel like women. I feel like women get the sincerity that they deserve when they are victims. I don't feel like so? I don't feel like 
as a community, we turning our nose. No, I think I think what he's saying in the situation with her, because they saying that because of her like with the lifestyle she lived, she was on drugs, she got help, she went to rehab, she did sleep around. She admitted it. She said it in the movie. She, she said, cranked all them. No, she but, said I slept with Shook because I wanted, I wanted to. to. It wasn't because she I, made a choice. <laughs> yeah, she said it. No, she didn't hold. And and Michelle a was in the movie. She kind of was the narrator of the movie, which was really weird. It was weird, but I kind of <laughs> liked it because she gave an she gave the reason behind the scene that was about to happen yeah. and she said it i slept with suge because i wanted to she not hiding who she was she not saying i was this innocent girl and i got beat for no reason she well, she did get beat for no reason but what she's saying is this is what i was i was blunt her, her the way she was raised she was raised to make it seem like being beat was okay mm -hmm. and she took that with her into her adulthood life and when it, in regards to what she accepted from men. Mm -hmm. So for people to say, I can't take her word because she was on drugs and she slept around. That's just like saying, okay, so because a person is out here maybe prostituting on the street, if she got beat up, she deserved it. Yeah. That's that's my point. It's just right. like, just because that's what she chose to do, that don't necessarily mean that she, that doesn't mean it's no necessary. She doesn't deserve to get beat. Right. And then what does she have to gain from this? Dr. Trump said he going to sue minutes, Sony. But... She like, okay, soon. She's not running from it. Right, but and, and and so I for for that to be her story, I don't have no problem with that. I don't even that already came out, like you said, like we already he pretty beat the lady that beat the DJ. I was getting ready. That's where I was getting ready to go. Like he, it, uh, I have, I don't remember uh -huh. her name, but it, then he got a rap sheet of putting Paul to ladies anyway. Right. So it ain't really that is not believable, but you can't unhoe. <laughs> and then they was basically oh, and another thing they said, Brother was in the movie. You, um, you just gonna stand on the guy that, that, that I, I, <laughs> you look like you're on the grid. I want you to jump out there and say you can unhook. I want <laughs> the you. The guy that played Suge Knight, then they had the Tupac character in the movie. They also was in an uproar because the guy kind of punked Tupac in the movie. Right. And they were saying, that ain't happening, Pac, what, no punk. And I'm like, you don't know. You were not there. If you watch Vlad TV, though, Daz and, and um, what's the name? They be on it. They give you the rundown. Daz yeah. and, um, it's a few of them. They got a few interviews on Vlad TV. Where was they, it Daz and Corrupt? Well, that, well Corrupt, it I haven't corrupt. seen. It was somebody I haven't, else. I haven't seen Corrupt on there, but another one of that, one, another person who was there, they pretty much give you the rundown. And they give you the rundown on Michelle A as well. But like I said, she never hid who she was. Right. She she made yeah. it very clear. This I, is what I did. This right. is my life. She never hid it, and I can respect that. She not. It's like I used you to said, have a little crush on her. That little. Voice, but I, I use the prime example used of Tina Turner. Right? I loved every. Bit they thought of Misha Lake because she had a baby by Shug and Dre, who were not friends. Unbeknownst to a lot of people, Tina Turner had her first Why child. Why you got put Tina out there? I'm just saying. Right. What's Tina, Tina got? Tina what's had, Tina got to do? Tina with it? had Tina, it's the Tina, same Tina, situation. Tina. And ain't nobody saying Tina a hoe, and ain't nobody saying they didn't believe Ike whooped Tina. What I'm saying is Tina had a baby by Ike's band member first. She then married Ike and had a baby. But the, in the movie, it made it seem like both kids are by Ike Turner. That's not the case. Her child is by the guitar player. Tina, mm -hmm. Tina, the Tina, other Tina, child Tina. is by Ike. Nobody questioned Tina, but everybody saying, "Oh, she couldn't have did that." But what's the difference? Tina because can't. Tina because, can't unhoe herself either. Because because <laughs> you stupid. Because Tina. Because what's love got to do with it? Didn't come out in the internet era. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really that simple. Mm -hmm. I think we're just we're just in that era where where, where where now we can look at people. You know, we can look at people's behavior and it's portrayed for us. Because back then. You know, we're not what even. What bios are actually real? Like a Undiv lot of this stuff it's don't even. And, 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 on... and you always gotta make you always gotta make it watchable. Yeah. So you're gonna hype up the it's crazy screen, stuff. You gotta have a screenplay. You gotta have a storyline. For the most part, bits and pieces of it is true. For the most part, it it's just based on, it's based on a true story. Yeah. You know I mean, loosely based. Yeah. That's what they hit you with. You know, and maybe sometimes the you know the names are changed to protect the guilty, and sometimes <laughs> they're not. But I, that's but, why they call it Beast by Dre. Stop it. She, <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but what's why? But, but think about it because now it, it, and you're right, we didn't do that with somebody like a Tina Turner, but we take a situation like this, and the first thing we look for is like, Where's the hole in the story? Right. Like so the, why? How can the we find a way, scene with Jay Z and how can Beyonce? We find for this not to be true. Who, what who is, the, who is the favorite? Who is the favorite in this tale? And then we'll pick a yeah, side. Yeah, and it's right. just like they like what they say. Okay, Jay Z and Beyonce elevator. What made Solange flick off? So it's Becky with the good head supposedly. What made 
Beyonce, Jay Z cheating on Beyonce. He going to cheat on her. They want. How do you know? You know what I told my wife. <laughs> so 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 when, when we because we watched the Lemonade thing together, mm. I was like, how did people are all up in arms? How do you know if any of this is true? Right. Yeah. Why do you did, care? Did, did she? But, but, not, but not only that. I, I mean, we care because we care because we y'all, care. Y'all in the behalf. Right. But, but and that's my <laughs> thing. Like care. we have this. I mean, we have news. this. We have this really funny assumption that artists are always telling the truth. Rappers, R and B singers, rockers, rockers, and country singers been lying for years. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And we have this assumption that because a rapper killed thirty thousand people. In, in, in a in verse a song. that right. is true. Right. Yeah. And we, come on, stop, man. Come on, for <laughs> real. Like, if it was like that, you wouldn't be rapping. Right. I even hate when people <laughs> argue about a rapper like they know him personally. They'd be like, I, I don't, can't you really, know him. <laughs> I can't give him a pass it's because a he is. Look, it's 50 Cent, it's, I, I'll give you an example. I remember 50, God, this makes me feel old. But 50 Cent made us, what, was it in the club or he, was it Wednesday? I Get High? But he made a song about smoking, about smoking, about mm. getting high. And he said, he was like, I'm a health nut. Right. He invested in vitamin water. He, right, like, right. I don't smoke weed. Right, right, right. <laughs> At that point, he he admitted it. Like Drake. Not, it's a song. Or Future. Yeah. All it's a song. Them. I don't do that stuff. <laughs> y'all Rick do it. Rick Ross. Y'all do it. The correctional right. officer. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a size y'all to do it. <laughs> but I ain't doing it. And it, 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 But but again, that, that, that shows you the power of media. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Because it shapes our perceptions. And we do, like, look at music now. Some I, You've heard people say a lot lately. You know, we grew up in the era where music, where rap music glorified the dealer. Right. Now we glorify the user. Right. You know, and it's just because it's just based on what music we allow music to drive us to do. Well, I'm not going to say we, but even me, think about it. Um, What is you think of all the stuff that you bought or the stuff that you did because you saw a rapper with it? Right. Like, I remember I had a silver Motorola two way pager (laughs) and I could count the people that had them. I didn't have nobody to text, <laughs> but I had it because yeah, I saw no. I saw yeah. Jay with it. I'm gonna well, tell you, what you know, I had, I, had the, I, had the, I had the bald head with the three stripes in my eyebrows. I was Onyx. You can't yeah. tell me. <laughs> no, you I could. was a b boy. Throw back trades. 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 Throw back yeah, I was I was on it. Who was you, Fred Ross? No, I was I was uh, sticky. Sticky. Yeah. sticky. You too dark. You too dark to be sticky. Man, man. I was sticky. That you had to be sun, tell me that. You had to be sun, was, sunny seas. I ain't do nothing. For me. <laughs> right. I'm mad like, that she was on it, but thank. What time we we ran? We over. way over. But thank you so much for coming. Last minute invite. You know we appreciate. It's all good, you. man. Yeah. We, it's, it's family. I'm Where can they find you at on Instagram? Yes, so you can find me um, on Instagram. I'm at Jason R Jones. Um, I'm on Twitter at Jason R Jones. I'm on Facebook at J Jones J A Y Jones. Um, and I'm always talking about random. I mean, I'm talking about either Bible stuff or Jesus stuff, church stuff, or like random stuff in sports <laughs> all the time. There you go. So you know, um, go Wiz and go Skins. So oh, scans. I ain't yeah. tripping off the way. Make though. sure you Same. follow us on all of our social media handles. <laughs> Spilling the tea. Dot e. Dot a on Instagram. Spill the tea show on Twitter. Spilling the tea radio show on Facebook. That's it. Vicky won't be here again next week, so we probably have next. Hey, Vicky. Vicky prepping for baby. So hey, Vicky. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, um, hey, Vicky. What is this? Shout out to Ricardo Deshaun for the good old. Cook up dad hat. Oh, I'm sorry. We have a comment from Deck Deep Brown. Do you all play inspirational music? I have a single that has no language at all. Email it to us, spilling the tea radio show.com. I'm um, at gmail.com. Email it and we can play it. Sure. And if you want to come in, you can come in. And if we don't like it, we're going to tell you in your yeah, face. Yeah, we will. We'll tell you in your face. Thank you guys so much no, for tuning in. You no, know we're not. We, we're trying to help out the community. See you all next week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>